Hey guys, welcome to yet another weekly video series from K21 Academy, where we take you in a journey from complete beginner to a certified professional. In this video, we will see difference between Google Cloud SQL and Google Cloud Spanner. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on Google Professional Cloud Architect. In this clip, our instructor will talk about difference between Google Cloud SQL and Google Cloud Spanner. Let's hear from our expert on the same. First, we'll talk in detail about structured RDBMS data. Then slowly we'll get into the next, next option. Now we'll talk about structured database. So I'll give a complete overview, okay? Then we'll go with the slides. So for structured, two offerings from Google Cloud Platform. One is Cloud SQL or Cloud SQL. The other one is Cloud Spanner. All right. When we talk about Cloud SQL, we'll see what is the capability of Cloud SQL. At the end of this explanation, Toki, you will know when to choose Cloud SQL and when to choose Cloud Spanner. That's the purpose of this spectral image. I'll tell you. Perfect. Excellent. Cloud SQL. Cloud SQL, both are structured database options. Cloud SQL supports MySQL. Postgre and SQL Server. If you're already working with any of this, Cloud SQL supports. That is MySQL, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQL Server. Any of this is your existing database that you're using it. Flavors of SQL database, you can use it in Cloud SQL. So Cloud SQL supports all three. MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQL Server. Then, if you're using Cloud SQL as a database for any of your options, the maximum capacity of Cloud SQL is 30 terabyte in size. The maximum Cloud SQL storage capacity is 30 TB, not beyond that. Okay. So you can store structured database up to 30 terabyte. Then, when we talk about database, replication is very important. So Cloud SQL by default has a regional replicate. So you have regional replication. So these are some of the informations you have to know as an overview is concerned, okay? Cloud SQL, Supports MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQL Server. Maximum capacity is 30 terabyte. And we have regional replication. What is regional replication? I create Cloud SQL in a specific region. In, in each region, you might have multiple zones. So when I create a SQL database within a specific region, say it is US East, now what happens if you want to go for high availability for backup, you replicate it to another zone within the region. So the replication by default is regional within the region. One zone fails, the replication is available in the other region. That you have to manually trigger it. Manual replication, but by default is regional. When you, when you take a replication, automatically it will choose for a specific zone within that region. And that is called as regional replication. Hope you got it. Cloud SQL, if you choose Cloud SQL as your product, Cloud SQL supports MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQL Server. The maximum size of Cloud SQL is 30 terabyte. And uh, by default, replication is regional. Cost is based on how much gig uh, uh, terabyte of data you store it. Each gig has some cost in each region. I'll tell you how that works. Now we'll see what is Cloud Spanner. What is the capability of Cloud Spanner? When you talk about Cloud Spanner, 
the first important point that you want to know here is unlimited capacity cloud spanner has unlimited capacity that's an amazing option right so cloud spanner has unlimited capacity whereas in cloud sql 30 terabyte perfect okay then when you talk about replication the replication is always global replication what is global replication you can replicate it to other geographical locations so if one region fails other region is available for you so you have a global replication right so these are two important points that differs from cloud sql unlimited capacity global replication and what all flavors cloud sql supports cloud spanner also supports that so now i think you get an answer when to choose cloud sql and when to choose cloud spanner if your database structured database is less than 30 terabyte in size go with cloud sql if you feel replication within a region is okay for you you can go for cloud sql if the capacity of your database can exceed beyond 30 terabyte in size based on your application go for cloud spanner or if you need your structured database that should be globally replicated go for cloud spanner i hope toki you got this information when to choose cloud sql and when to choose cloud spanner now how to prepare for gcp certification google cloud certification examinations are known for their depth and complexity level it is almost impossible to highlight the value of prior study and learnings surprisingly at the end of the exam google does not issue a score instead it actually gives you pass or fail grade which does not help you to figure out where to improve so there are some tips that can help the first one is take a relevant learning path we have put down everything about the certification including the basic concept that one should know everything like overview cloud and google cloud platform virtual machines virtual networks data storage service app engine function cloud run resource management resource monitoring interconnecting networks load balancing and auto scaling infrastructure automations google kubernetes engine maintenance and monitoring this is eight week roadmap where we take you from basics to expert level along with tips and resources to clearing the exam the second one is get hands-on practice on google cloud platform hands-on lab actually provide easy way for you to quickly get practical experience on real cloud environment the third one is review the outline in the exam guide before going for the exam i highly recommend you to go through all the official documentation and exam guide you can check out all the exam related information by going onto the link cloud.google.com slash certifications these are the certification google offering like if you are preparing for associate level exam then click on cloud engineer you will find all the necessary information regarding associate cloud engineer exam like length of the exam registration fee language exam format recommended experience and all the details related to this exam and if you are preparing for professional level exams like cloud architect cloud developer cloud engineers you can check out all the detailed information by clicking on these links let's say i'm selecting cloud architect it will show you all the detailed information regarding professional cloud architect exam like you should have knowledge how to design and plan a cloud solution architect analyze and optimize technical and business processes and so on similarly you will get length of the exam registration fee exam format a recommended experience and all the necessary information next one is before going for the actual exam it is highly recommended to go for practice exam if you want to become google professional cloud architect and want to learn right from basics to advanced level i would like to invite you for our 90 minute free class with our expert trainer which will not only help you to understand basics 
but it will also give you an idea of the learning part to follow. This interactive class will help you in gaining an understanding of what is cloud and why you must learn, why Google Cloud, core services like compute, IAM, storage, networking, management, Kubernetes and Google Cloud, demo on deploying Kubernetes engine and so on. You can register for this free class by going on to the link k21academy.com slash gcp pro 02. If you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up. I will see you in next episode from K21 Academy. Till then, take care.